I'm not kidding when I say like the only place in sports media where you can have a legitimate conversation about the NCAA threatening to boycott over some of these bills is OutKick because there are so many people afraid of the cancel culture mob that they won't say what they actually think. I can't imagine that there is a single person who covers sports for a living that truly thinks that you should be able to choose what gender you compete as, especially in a high school level or a middle school level or whatever else. Like when kids are growing up, I'm all in favor of if you are uh, wanting to play baseball and you're a girl and you're in a boys league, go for it, right? Because there's not a traditional baseball to play. Uh, In fact, I'm a coach on a little league team and I have been for several years, and we've had a lot of different girls that have played on our Little League baseball teams. More power to them. I think it's great. A lot of times those girls are some of the best players on the team. I think a few years ago in Little League baseball, we had uh, the famous pitcher. Uh, I don't know, it's probably been a decade or so that that was taking place. I think it's fantastic, the Little League World Series I'm talking about. But the idea that, and again, I think it's important to think about the procedural posture on these cases that are being filed. The one that has started much of the response around the country has been what was going on with the situation around Connecticut. And by the way, that was Monet Davis, right? Uh, back in 2014. Do you remember that, Dub? I mean, she was fantastic. Great she, pitcher. She was a star, league. man. She was yeah, unbelievable. she was a star on the team. She was fantastic. And we played a game last night, and on our 10-year-old baseball team, uh, our one of the, the only girl on the team came in, and she has an absolute cannon. Boys can't hit her. She came in and closed out the game. We won by a couple of runs. She struck out the side. Just, I mean, absolute cannon of an arm. And I've played and coached with a lot of different Little League baseball where girls play in Little League. I think it's fantastic. More power to them because they can't play traditional baseball They have softball, but if you want to play baseball, play baseball. Totally in favor of it. But the idea that you would have all of these state records being set in high school by a biological male athlete who decides to identify as female, that is, to me, I'm on the side of the girls who are filing the lawsuit in Connecticut. I don't have daughters, but if I did... I would want them to compete against other women to win state championships. Now, I don't have any issue at all with someone deciding what gender they want to be. If that makes you happier, then go for it. As an adult, I just, I'm not someone who sits around and judges the decisions of consenting adults. Some of you might disagree. That's fine. I'm, you know, kind of the Sheryl Crow. If it makes you happy, go for it. It can't be that wrong, right? I think that was the Sheryl Crow line. As long as it's not a crime and a consenting adult wants to do it, go for it if it makes you happier. But the idea that champions, state champions, who are biologically male, would be competing against women, I'm not in favor of it. And and I think this is easy if you take it outside of high school too. Imagine if Bruce Jenner, after winning the decathlon, credible athlete, four years later had decided to identify as female and come back and argued to be able to compete as a woman. Well, Caitlyn Jenner would have been infinitely better than anybody else in female decathlon. I mean, Bruce Jenner just destroyed every dude and now four years later in the Olympics, Caitlyn Jenner is going to be competing against women? That's not going to be a, a close contest. And that's why the Olympics requires that you be biologically male or biologically female in order to compete. And some people say, well, the data reflects that this doesn't really change the outcome. Well, it doesn't change the outcome half of the time because if you are a woman and you decide to identify as a man, you have virtually no chance to compete in male sports because you're competing against all biological men who are bigger, stronger, and faster on average, than the average woman. So the only time that this applies is when a biological man decides to compete against women 
because that is the only way in competition that this thing ever arises. And the idea that the NCAA would be getting involved in individual laws that are being passed in individual states about what is and what is not uh, appropriate as it comes to competition, especially of a high school degree and a high school nature, it just doesn't make any sense. And it is, I believe, a real mess that, again, I go to the procedural posture. This is me putting my lawyer hat on. Look at who's filing the lawsuits in Connecticut where much of this emerged. It was high school girls who suddenly were unable to compete for championships because of who they were losing to, a biological male who was competing as women, as a woman. And the fact that somehow having that conversation is, is, is considered to be controversial or verboten in sports, I mean, these are real conversations and debates. And by the way, you don't have to agree with me. Certainly, you can make the argument, if you want to, I think you're wrong, but you can make the argument that people should be able to choose what their gender is, and then on top of choosing their gender, they should be able to choose which gender they compete against for purposes of sports. I just, I disagree with you, but you can make that argument. And I'm not going to say to somebody who's making that argument, oh, you're not allowed to make that argument. Because I don't believe, there's a big difference, but cancel culture represents is cancel culture is you can't say that and you aren't allowed to have that opinion. That's what cancel culture is. Really, it's like I disagree with you and you can't even have the opinion that you just uttered out loud. That's cancel culture. What I believe in is robust debate. That means you can have any opinion under the sun and I am going to uh, agree or disagree with your opinion and we'll debate what the truth should be and what the result should be as we break all this down. All right, uh, this is, I think, an important conversation continuing to play itself out uh, and uh, I'm not sure that there is an easy solution to this that doesn't end up, unfortunately, inflaming all sorts of attention and that is why I believe that the decision that was made by the NCAA is not going to make this better. It's going to get the people who have strong opinions even more dug in in their heels, and eventually we're going to be doing what often happens in America, which is arguing loudly back and forth and arguing that whatever side we're not a part of is awful and evil, and they don't deserve the right to have their opinion. What I always say about OutKick is, you can love me, you can hate me, But the First Amendment is alive and well on this show. And we try to talk about every subject under the sun. I believe that adults should be able to pursue whatever makes them happier. And ultimately, how exactly that ends up shaking out will be seen, I think, in a big extent in the world of sports. But for a consenting adult, as long as you're not breaking the law, if it makes you happier, I think you should do it. I'm a pretty live and let live guy. And... I think a lot of you that listen to this show are as well, but when it comes to the difference between male and female sports and who you are crowning as champions of sports, I think this is a significant issue that has already become an issue in the state of Connecticut and I believe the state of Idaho where there have been lawsuits filed. And ultimately, this is one of those cases where you have two different identities colliding, right? Where you have ardent feminists who are huge Title IX supporters and believe obsessively in the importance of women's athletics. And then you also have strong transgender activists. And so you have two of these identities colliding in the world of sports. And you can't have both of those identities win, right? Because if you are a super strong feminist who is committed to the idea of the importance of women's sports then you're having biological men who identify as women ending up winning your competitions. Those two things are at loggerheads. And this is somewhat similar, I would say, to the Deshaun Watson versus all of the women who are uh, accusing Deshaun Watson of sexual assault situation. You have a black quarterback 
who many people in sports are now terrified to ever say anything negative about, going head-to-head with Me Too. And so many people in sports are terrified to say anything negative about a woman alleging sexual assault, too. In fact, the Houston Chronicle just fired a guy for comments that he made uh, on the uh, on radio shows, not uh, that, that were basically taking strongly the side of uh, Deshaun Watson over the women. And so a lot of people are just terrified to say anything about stories like these, but I don't think that's how you advance discussion. I don't think you can have an advanced discussion when people are terrified to say what they actually believe. So come hell or high water, your boy here is going to tell you what he thinks every single day. Sometimes you may agree. Sometimes you may think I'm crazy. It's a little bit like that Alonzo morning gif, if you've seen it on the internet, where he's like shaking his head, no, 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 and then by the end, he starts shaking his head, yes. I think that's how a lot of you ended up fans of OutKick. (laughs) 